Our next question is from Rachel from New Jersey. Hey, Rachel, how you doing? Uh, how can we help you? Hey, guys, thank you for having me. Um, so my question is, I'm a trainer and coach and someone who really wants to create and give content. I've been doing this for seven, eight years almost, but I still lack the confidence putting the information out there. Um, I know I still have so much to learn, even with everything that I have learned so far. So how have you worked through this throughout your career? And what advice would you give to a newbie coach or even like a seasoned trainer who probably feels this way as well? Yeah. You know, first off, uh, don't feel bad. This is so common. Mm -hmm. I think this is, this is one of the more common things I would hear from hundred percent trainers that work for me. And I would hear from new trainers. I would hear from experienced trainers. Um, and I would remind them that the people that you're helping know way less yes. uh, than you do. And not only that, but all the advanced health and fitness and wellness information that you may know uh, or that you'll learn, you're not even going to be able to apply to most people. Um, I think one of the reasons why Mind Pump mm -hmm. has done well is because we take a uh, simple concept and we communicate them uh, and we don't go super crazy, mainly because a lot of that, that real advanced stuff isn't going to do anybody much good. The only people that like that or need that typically are people like you who work um, in the in the fitness space. I think this is uh, – I, I love this question because it's uh, – most of my fitness career I was training and developing other trainers, and I'd say this is the number one thing that uh, stifles their growth as a trainer is just getting in their own way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I even remember feeling this a little bit when we first started Mind Pump, even after – what, 15 plus years of experience that we all had getting on the YouTube channel and knowing that, you know, potentially thousands or millions of people are going to get criticized. And yeah. Judged. They're going to listen yeah. to me. They're going to judge me. They're going to, they're going to hang on everything that I say. And then I, I would catch myself talking as if I was trying to impress my peers mm -hmm. versus communicating the same way that I've communicated to my clients for 15 years. And it's funny because when you do that and you're super hypercritical yeah. of yourself, Honestly, it doesn't even do well. So if you're thinking about this as far as putting content out on Instagram, Facebook, on YouTube, and this is your concern, the irony is that those really high-level conversations don't even perform very well on all those platforms. If you want to reach the masses, you've got to communicate the same way that you can communicate to your aunt or your uncle or your little brother or older sister, whatever – like the same way you would communicate at home to those people and you got to get out of your head and not think about you're talking to your peers or I've got this this educator that's going to listen to me and they're going to critique what I said. Get away from all that. You're trying to help people and that, if that's your desired outcome and you lead with that, then communicate the same way and, it, and you'll be just fine and stick yeah. to the things you feel confident yeah, stick in. Stick with what you're passionate about. I definitely struggle with this a bit, trying to you know, change my voice and, and make it so, like like you said, peers and everybody else watching uh, would sort of, uh, you know, validate and, and and would back what I was saying. But really, like, if you just stick with what you know and, and what you're passionate about, uh, a lot more people are going to benefit from it. And, you know, that that's something that just, it just comes with with putting it out there with reps and and, and getting your, your, your message out and, and fine tuning it over and over again. And go, go look at, if you get a chance, go to our YouTube channel and and just look at like the top 15 videos or so that perform really well and listen to the the way that we're communicating and look at all the hate too by the way so the our most viral videos uh, is we have the equal amount of hate of people, come, critics coming on there and saying, oh, that's not true and trying to argue with us with biomechanics or trying to say that we didn't communicate something well. And that's just our peers and people that are trying to come in there and stir shit up. It's actually helping millions of people that it reached. So go look at those and just pay attention to the way that the stuff that we're, we're communicating. And there's not very high. It's not very high level. Then we have stuff on that YouTube channel that is really high level that mm -hmm. we've had people come on the channel and they talk, you know, 10 levels above the average person, and it doesn't perform well because the average person hears that it goes right over the top of their head. And think of yourself as a curator, right? You're you're there, too, to direct people to other people that specialize in those areas, and uh, people really appreciate that if you if you can kind of introduce them to uh, other people they would have otherwise never found. Yeah, Rachel, what are the what are the number one goal? What's the number one goal you get with uh, with your clients? Is it is it fat loss or weight loss like uh, like I've experienced? Um, definitely change in body comp 
position. And I think overall, just, you know, switching the mindset from this like all or nothing mentality to a more um, abundant mindset. That's definitely something that I've helped them do. And simplifying their workouts. Um, I think most of my clients come to me because they see they find like simplicity and ease when it comes to training and working out, as opposed to feeling overwhelmed and burnt out and all of that too. So I try to really just simplify it for everyone. Yeah. Now that's spoken like somebody who's been training people for over five years. You actually sound uh, a lot like you know what you're talking about. That's what I would have to teach trainers. I mean, let's say you have a a client who wants to lose weight and you have two trainers. One trainer explains the intricacies of the metabolism, talks about ketosis if they cut out their carbs, talks about the Krebs cycle. And then the other trainer um, helps with their behaviors and helps them deal with bad relationships with food and maybe says something to them like, hey, let's try drinking some more water and let's start with that which trainer do you think would be more successful? Now, I, mm-hmm. I, th- I think the answer is pretty obvious. So think of it that way. Your, your desired outcome is to get people to improve their relationship to exercise, maybe develop one that's lifelong, eat better. All that complicated stuff, it's great. I love learning it. I mean, especially me, it's one of my favorite things to, to read about. But it, I mean, how often do I communicate that to clients? Almost never. It's, there's almost zero value. It doesn't help them at all. The people that like to hear that kind of stuff is people like us, people yeah. who work uh, in the field. So simple is better uh, and communicate in ways that are effective. And that usually means simple and direct, not complex or way out there. No, that definitely helps. I think the more seasoned I'm getting, the further away I am from where I initially started. And that, you know, that was the basics. That, it was so simple when I didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it, it, I forgot. Yeah, that, that changes. <laughs> yeah, I forgot the name. There's a, there's a, there's a, uh, there's an actual term for it where it's like when you first start, you think you know everything. Then the right. more you learn, you go through this period Is of like Dunbar's oh, law. Oh, car, yeah, I think so. I yeah. think it's like a Kruger Dunn. Kruger or something Dunn. Like that. There it is. Something, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there you go. No, and, and again, you are. 100 percent normal this is so common among trainers stick to what you know keep I, it simple i don't i mean it's even common with us i mean uh, like that's why i wanted to do admit that with the youtube channel like i mean we've been doing this for a mm-hmm. long time and you still it's hard not to feel that that pressure especially when you're putting content out on the web right so but i mean we we constantly off air are reminding ourselves we can't allow the few trolls that are going to come on there and try and critique the way i pronounce something or the way i describe something like who cares it's really about the people that you're helping you got to learn to just kind of ignore that mm-hmm. and stick to the things that you love talking about you're passionate about and you know how many people you've helped with that so forget the few mm-hmm. you know few of our peers that are going to come on there that are going to hate on you don't pay attention to that continue to put out content that you know that's helped people now rachel are are you using any of our programs to help uh, your clients, like maybe Maps Prime or Prime Pro? Um, yes, I have them all. <laughs> I use them myself because I don't like to program for myself either. Um, yeah, Prime and Prime Pro, I've definitely incorporated so much more mobility into my own clients' programs. Um, and like Anabolic is honestly where I start a majority of them just because that's uh, that's building the foundation there. So they've definitely come in handy throughout awesome. my uh, career. Awesome, Rachel. Yeah, I mean, what Justin said about being a curator, uh, that's uh, 100%. Use as many resources Uh, trusted resources as possible. And when you become the go-to person, when your clients know they can come to you, ask you a question, and you'll either A, know the answer, or more likely know where they can find the answer, now you've provided tremendous value. So great job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. God, that's so common uh, uh, with trainers. Number one thing. Here's here's where it really starts to translate. It's the, the trainer feels that way. And then they're afraid to ask for money from clients to hire them. Mm -hmm. And it was, and and it was like this hurdle that I would have to help people get through because like, I can't have them pay me. I don't know everything. It's insecurity. Yeah. Like nobody knows everything. Well, I think it's been, it's exaggerated now too, because this is now the new model, right? It Mm -hmm. used to be just, you know, 10 years ago, people weren't talking about creating. Not everyone wasn't a content creator, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you were a good trainer. You learned what you needed to do to help people. You were good one-on-one in person where now the business has evolved that you have to be able to put stuff out on social media platforms and present your information. And that's, there's a lot. I felt that. I mean, 15 plus years into this and 
we had the first, I hate, I still hate YouTube. I still don't, it's still uncomfortable for me to look at a camera, pretend like I'm talking to a million people and there's no one there that I'm talking mm -hmm. to. That's still a very, and then also know that I'm going to get thousands of trolls that are going to see this at one point and yeah. a lot of my peers that are going to hang on every word that I say and look for all the holes to try and poke holes in my whatever, whatever point I'm trying to make. Mm -hmm. And so I get it, man. This is uh, even someone experienced. I know what it's like, but I know how I also got out of that, which is fuck those people. Yeah. Stop worrying about your, those people that are going to come on there and it's hate so like that. It's so tough because like, it's easy to compare yourself to all these other channels and all these other people doing things that you feel like you're going to, you're wanting to evolve and, and do and replicate that. But really it's about finding your own voice and finding, uh, you know, what is sticking with your audience and, and, you know, who your audience is. So that's what you really need to focus on.